Welcome to the R video tutorial on basic data structures. This is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University. Let's get started. What are the basic data structures that we're going to use? Well, let's roll through a few of them and you'll start learning that R has many, many different basic data structures. Okay, over here in my editor, you can see I already have comments up at the top for my code so that I understand that this code is associated with basic data structures so that later when I'm looking through all of my code to find out what kind of structures exist, it's easy for me to locate. The first type of structure we want to talk about is a variable. And this is a single number. So for example, I'm going to take A1, I will use the assignment operator and I'll put in here 5. That will assign the value A1 will get the value 5. I also do B1 as 10. So these will be two values uh, that are assigned to different variables. And I can run this, and down in the console, you'll see that virtually nothing really happens. Uh, however, you will see it show up in your environment as in our previous video. If I want to see the variable and see the variable name without looking in the environment, I can simply type its name down here in the console. Similarly for B1. All right, the next type of structure that we'd probably want to look at is the vector structure. Now, what's important about a vector is it's not a single number. So I'm going to use C1 here. I'm just going down through my list of ABCs. It's not a single number, and we're going to use the function C, which uh, makes it a column of numbers. So I'm going to put in here some numbers, 5.3, 2.2, 1.6. Now, all three of these numbers are tied together inside of C1. Now, I've typed this in the editor, but R can't see C1 until I actually run it. So I'm going to run C1, and uh, nothing happens down in the console, but if I type in C1 into the console, you'll see the numbers come back. Now, more importantly, if you want to retrieve values from here, so we can type in C1 and then use a bracket. So here, C1 in the first position is 5.3. And if I run this, you will see down here in the console, 5.3 uh, returns itself. Similarly, if I use C1 and look at the third position, you will see 1.6 turns up. What happens if I use C1 in a position that is not defined. So for example, five, there is no position five here. And notice it returns an NA telling you that there's nothing there. There's no value associated with that. All right, let's try another example of one of these just so we have it around. So again, you see which will uh, form a column of numbers. So here are my numbers that I'm going to use, and I can put them into R by simply running, hitting the Run button, and it will put it into my environment. So you can also uh, use R You can also use R for text vectors. So you can put text into a vector as well. So I'm going to use E1 here, if I can type correctly. E1, C again. And then here I'm going to put in my single quotes, and I'm going to put in some names. So Abdul, Bob, Sally, Karen, and way. So these are names, and if I run this, it will store them just as simply as it stored any of the other ones. And if I come down here and type in E1, you'll see it hands back the names to me in quotes. So that's pretty easy to work with.
The next basic structure that we'd want to work with is a matrix. Now, I'm going to add some spaces here so that we can all uh, see a little closer instead of being right down on the uh, bar there. So a matrix is a two-dimensional array of numbers. And what we want to do is be able to create matrices because matrices are a fundamental item that exists in R and will constantly be presented to you. So I'm going to call this one F1. And I'm going to use the matrix function to define this. I have to put in a vector of numbers. So I'm going to put in my a vector of numbers 1, 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0 0.4. And then I'm going to define how many rows I want my array or matrix to have. So there's two, and the number of columns will also be two because I have four values here, one, two, three, four. Two times two is four, and this will create a matrix for us. And I forgot a comma, which is quite common. So don't be surprised if you make some errors. It's okay, just go back and fix them. All right, so if I look down here uh, and I type in F1, I get back a two-dimensional array. It has two columns, two rows. Now notice the order in which it puts the values. The values go vertically, not across, not horizontally like one would expect. So if we have a matrix here, we have our original value was 0 0.1, the second value was 0 0.2, and it puts it under it. Again, 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 goes under it because it's listing things as if they were in a column versus going across things as a row. There are some tricks that you can do to make it go by row, and we'll get to those in later videos. Right now, we're just talking about the basic structures. Now, if we want to retrieve val values from here, we have to use the bracket notation. But now we have two coordinates. In a vector, we just had one. How far down in the, the vector was it? Now we need to tell it a row and a column name. So I can type in here F1, use my brackets, and I need to put in a row and a column. So here I'm going to put in row 2, column 2. And this should give me a specific value of 0 0.4 because that's the last value. So if I run this, I will see 0 0.4 pop up. Again, you can try it with a different one. For example, 2, 1. So this will be in row 2, column 1. And you get value 0 0.2 back. All right, so let's add a little bit to comments here because this one becomes a little more confusing. So you would put in your matrix, and then you would put in brackets the row that you want and the column that you want. And the reason you do this is so you can remember which number goes where. It's nice to have it in your comments so that you can set things up and make it easy for you to work. Also, you should probably put in here uh, some other comments because matrices are a little more difficult than uh, a regular vector. For example, let's also add the comment that the number of elements in the matrix must match the number in the vector, okay? So the number of elements, so here, you can put in here, n row times n columns is the number of elements, and that has to equal to the length of the vector that we used, okay? If that doesn't work, it won't, it won't build this thing correctly. All right, let's move on here and move to a, uh, an array. Now, uh, one thing to quickly note is that matrices really don't like text. So you might want to put that as a note. C's do not like text. If you put text in one, often it will convert the entire matrix to text, and then you won't be able to do any math with it, which is the whole point of having a matrix. All right, I'm going to put some spaces in here so that we can uh, talk about arrays next.
So arrays are similar to a matrix. -y. We went from a vector, which is in one dimension, then we go to a matrix, which is in two dimensions, and an array is in as many dimensions as we want. And right now we'll play with one that's just three dimensions. So I'm going to use the array function. I'm going to put in a series of values, and you'll see uh, why I'm putting in these values here in just a minute. But I'm going to create an array that has three dimensions. So let me get done here typing these in. 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. 1.0s, 1 1.1, 1 1.2. And the reason I'm picking these numbers is it's easy to see which which place we're in. So, but here we have to use the dim function or the setting. And we're actually going to put in another vector and the vector is going to tell us what the sizes are. So, this one's going to have two rows, three columns, and two layers. That's the way you can think about this. It's layering into a larger uh, object than just having two dimensions. This has three dimensions, and it has two rows, three columns, and two layers. So if we were to run this, we can enter, have it go into R. And then again, to retrieve values, well, first, before we retrieve any values, let's just see what it looks like. So come down here, we'll see what it looks like. And you can see it gives me two sets of output. It gives me a 1 and a 2, and that corresponds to the third dimension here that it's interested in. It gives me a matrix for the first layer on the third dimension and a matrix for the second layer on the third dimension. All right, now if we want to pick off a value, so let's put in here retrieve values. We simply use the bracket notation again. So bracket, and then we're going to put in the dimensions that we want. So I might want 2, 1, 2, or 2, 1, 1. Let's see what it returns. This gives us, it's in the second row, first column of the first array. So if we come up here, we look first column, or the second column. Wait, where are we at? I'm lost. Oh, no. No, we're interested in rows. Second row. Okay, and then we're going to go to the first column. So that's this value here in the first layer. Now notice, you can get c confused really quick if you don't keep track of what these indices are. And that's why I kind of demonstrate this goofiness, so that you can see what actually shows up. So I'm going to be interested in the second row, second column of the second layer. So we can run this. And we can see it's the value 1, which is, let's see, where did we hide that here? All right, so the second layer, second column, second row, right? And then we get a 1.0 there. All right, you should be set now and be able to start working on creating some basic data structures in R, and we'll be using these structures over and over and over again, as you quickly see that we use the vectors over and over again. So get used to these data structures because they'll be used quite often uh, whenever you're programming in R. All right, thank you for watching the video, and hopefully you'll watch the next one and continue with your studies in R.